All right, in this video, I want to quickly talk about multi-axis pocketing and some of what we can do to, you know, get a good result there. Um, when we look at this part, you know, it's pretty simplistic, but getting a full multi-axis roughing algorithm with dynamic type motion um, on a five-axis machine, it can be pretty easy. easy. Uh, typically, for a pocket like this, you would use something like axis substitution. But because these walls of this pocket are not to the center point, um, that would mean that we leave a lot of extra material there where we want that tool to, to remove as much material as possible there. So multi-axis pocketing uh, allows us to do that. You know, we get a pretty good result here where the tool can come parallel to that wall when roughing, right, in both directions and then spiral down and do the same thing. So I want to talk about how we can do that and how I go about creating this toolpath. To do that, I created a few things. I created a plug. So this is a stock um, that, that plugs in that hole, right? Um, I've also created some geometry. And I want to talk to you about how I created this geometry, right? So we're going to shut this off, and I'm just going to create a new level here. Uh, and I'll call this new drive. Okay, this is going to be our new drive geometry. So I'm going to come into the top plane here. We're getting sitting along there. I'm going to set my Z down to the center point. Okay, and to start, I'm just going to create some wireframe on this edge. One there, one there, and then we'll modify the length here a little bit. I'll add a hundred thousandths to that. Okay, now. If I'm in the top plane, I can draw a, oh, I don't want to do just a regular line. I want to do a line perpendicular. Come out to this tip and I'll go, we got a half inch tool, so we need to be at least like 260. Let's see, 0.260. Perfect, green chip, or check plus. And we'll do the same here, 0 0.260. Perfect. All right, now we'll take an um, create a spline blended and I'll just come out to the end here come out to the end here that gives me a nice surface that's not necessarily along that radius but what this allows me to do is get parallel to the wall on one side with my tool axis control and parallel to the wall on the other side with my tool axis control now I can come in and just create a draft surface and to do that let's do a partial chain we'll go from here to here Okay. And that covers the whole pocket, creates a floor to the bottom of that pocket very nicely. Okay, we'll green check out. All right. So now we basically have everything we need with the exception of this plug. Now, how did I create that? Uh, I'll just make another uh, level here, and I'll call this plug 2. And model prep, modify feature. I think if I hold, click all these different faces here, and I want to create body, green check, and there's my plug, right? Pretty easy to create that. Now we can shut that off. All right, so to create your multi-axis toolpath, I'm going to go toolpaths, pocketing. And I'm using this half inch end mill. So for stock, pretty easy. I'm going to select this plug that we just built. So plug two. I'll shut everything else off here. And triple click, or double click, sorry, grabs that. And then cut pattern. So machining geometries now, I'm going to shut this plug off. These are my machining geometries, right? And my floor is going to be this new drive. OK. We're leaving 0 on the floor. We can adjust this later, but we're not really concerned about that. I'll do three slices down my depth. Uh, 40,000 step over is fine. And I'm going to create a containment around this guy. Green check out. All right, 
at this point, you don't really do anything with tool axis control because your tool axis control, that's why we spent the time on that surface. It's going to come normal to that surface. Collision control is pretty straightforward. Uh, the one thing I have found that I do need to adjust a lot is underneath linking uh, links between slices. I will shut off the default links and use ramp there. Otherwise, you'll get a plunge um, on your following slices. So doing that, multi-axis roughing does take some time to generate. I will say that uh, it's doing a lot, but you know, pretty quickly, I've got a decent tool path here, right? So what we're doing, we're coming in, and I can adjust this. So that's kind of spiraling a little too high. That's easily adjusted in, I'll show you that real quick. I'm not going to regen because that'll take time here for the sake of the video. But that's easily adjusted in your linking by changing your uh, your entry feed distance. So we're coming in by 400 thousandths here and that's why that's happening. Okay, but you get a pretty nice tool path here. And you'll see it comes down and comes parallel to the wall, parallel to that wall, back parallel to that wall. So does does a nice job. Um, and that's typically how you do multi-axis pocketing. It really comes from a good floor surface. Uh, well-defined stock can really make that easy. Here we've already got the floor surface defined, so I don't even have to go through that effort. I would just pick this floor surface, pick the walls uh, in that containment, and I should get really good results there.